Dr. Khan Show. I'm Dr. Peter Khan, functional medicine doctor, and on this show, you're just one whiteboard away from solving your health puzzle. And on today, I'm going to explain why digestion symptoms are so confusing. Now, when we say digestion problems, what we're really talking about are things like heartburn and reflux and GERD and SIBO and all these different digestion issues. But really, at the end of the day, they are nothing more than just a diagnosis. And what is a diagnosis? Diagnosis means, really, essentially, that your doctor is putting a label on something you have. You have a whole set of symptoms, you feel fatigued, you're tired, you react to food, you have pain, you feel inflamed, you have brain fog, you can't focus, you don't sleep well, you have weight issues, you have food reactions, you have gas floating. Right? These are a set of symptoms, and a lot of people come to me with all of those symptoms. And the doctors just say, well, you have depression, so you got to see the psychologist. And you have stomach issues, so you got to see the GI guy. And you have Hashimoto or thyroid problem, you got to see the hormone guy. So they're just passing you out to a different doctor. Everybody gets a cha-ching, right? Run your insurance card, you pay a doctor. Every doctor, they're, all the buddies gets a, a visit from you. Everybody gets to take a cut from the insurance. But it gets, it gets you no closer to what your answer is, even though you have a diagnosis. Diagnosis is useless if you don't understand what's causing the diagnosis. So here we have diagnosis, which is what they tell you you have. And then here are your symptoms. Your symptom might be gas. You may have bloating. You may have indigestion. You may have constipation. stool, diarrhea, or alternating, right? And you may have food sensitivities or food reactions, right? These are the symptoms, common stuff that you have, right? Now, the problem is they can give you a diagnosis for these things. The diagnosis might be, you know, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Your diagnosis might be candida. Your diagnosis might be IBS, which means that I'm BSing you. I don't know what's wrong with you, so I'm going to call it IBS because you have constipation, diarrhea, irritable bowel syndrome. Well, duh, you already explained to the doctor that my bowels are irritated. I'm having constipation, diarrhea. So they go, okay, you have irritable bowel syndrome. Basically, the diagnosis a lot of times just describe the symptom that you have. Colitis. What a dumb one that is. Right? Colitis, inflammation of your colon, okay? So what's causing the colitis? Don't know, here's a drug for it. I mean, put, I get that in the, in the comment section. So you, if you have this experience where your doctor just give you a diagnosis, you ask them why you're having this, they say don't know, and they give you a pill. And you don't feel any better, you're no closer to the answer, you're getting more and more frustrated. Put, I get that in the comment section. So you can see how many people suffer not just from the condition itself, but suffer from the doctor's lack of answer for you. I mean, it's double suffering. It's like insult on top of injury. So that's why we have to really understand it. Now, when we look at these symptoms, right? You have diagnosis, these are your symptoms. But what's the mechanism? What is actually causing these problems? So let's talk about mechanism. The mechanism is what is creating the symptom. What is the actual reason? So when you have gas, that's caused by fermentation. Right? Things sits in your stomach. Food sits in your intestinal tract or your stomach, and it's not being digested well. So food sits there, they'll start to ferment. They'll ferment against bacteria and yeast. And so now you get gas as a result of fermentation. You get bloating as a result of distension. Right? You're bloating because something is stretching, it's pushing out. Typically it could be gas, it could be just food sitting there and not going through, and it's just undigested food, or even fecal matter can create distension. That's why you feel bloated. The indigestion, that could describe a lot of things. And a lot of times when people say, I have digestion problems, 
Or they say, I have a stomach ache. Well, it's actually not their stomach, it's some other places. It's like their small intestine, their large intestine. So being very specific, know your anatomy is so important. And a lot of times people either don't know their anatomy or they don't know where the symptoms, what part of the anatomy is creating that symptom. So it's really important to learn this, okay? So if you have indigestion, that could be due to a lack of secretion. Meaning you're not making enough stomach acid, you don't make enough enzymes, you don't make enough bile to help you break down fat. A decrease in secretion can cause indigestion. So you just don't break down food, right? Constipation, diarrhea, what are those problems? The mechanism for that typically is a motility problem. Motility issue. If you're constipated, you have decreased motility. Motility means how fast does food go through your intestinal tract by way of muscular contraction, right? Your intestinal wall has smooth muscle that contract, so you push food through. This is called peristalsis. The motility, if you're constipated, will be low. If you have diarrhea, then that makes us too fast. So things are just coming straight out. So that's a motility issue, right? So then you, you don't treat the symptom, you address the underlying mechanism. Okay, what would be a food reaction? What's the mechanism for food reaction? A lot of times people say, I have food allergies, I have food sensitivities, so I have something wrong with my intestine or my digestive system. That's why I have food reaction. Wrong! <laughs> food reaction is not a digestive problem. Food reaction is an immune system problem. It's an immune reaction. When you react to food, it's not your digestion that's reacting to your food. It's your immune system in the digestive tract reacting to the food. Food reaction is not a digestion problem, folks. It's an immune system problem. So then we have to look at triggers and your immune tolerance and vitamin D levels and a lot of different things that we have to look at. So this is the diagnosis that you end up with, right? You get, you know, GERD. Maybe GERD is a diagnosis, right? So these are diagnoses. These are the symptoms that you have. This is the mechanism for that symptom. So in Western medicine, they stop right here. You got a diagnosis, there's a drug that will match that diagnosis. Whether you feel better or not, doesn't matter. And what's causing that diagnosis, they don't really care. It's just the way the system is designed. It doesn't mean your doctor's a bad guy or they're stupid. They're doing the best they can to help you, but guess what? The best they can is that. It's a drug. Or surgery. And or scope, right? Endoscopy, colonoscopy, that's all they got. Now that's helpful if you have a bleed or tumor, right? But it's not going to be helpful if you already have these things done and you don't feel better. And so many people are doing these things and they're no closer to health. In fact, they're actually harboring something in their body that can eventually turn into some other problem, which is really sad. Now, sometimes then people, because the medical doctor or the Western medicine is not helping, so they start to try to solve their own problem. You start Googling online, why do I have gas and bloating? And you might come upon some article and say, oh, take this, take that. The problem is you still don't know why you're having a problem. They'll say, okay, this herb is traditionally used by the Native American to help me with gas. So it might help you too, okay, but what's causing your gas? What's the mechanism? Could be a lot of different reasons, right? So you're taking a supplement that doesn't really solve the underlying problem. It's a band-aid at best, or it's a supplement, it's natural, right? What well, that doesn't mean anything. What is the real reason why you have problem? So we gotta understand the mechanism. Now beyond mechanism, there's another level. Now we have root cause, right? So going this way, this is the most surface thing that you can do. The most surface. Now you're getting a little deeper. Okay, symptom that make up the diagnosis, right? Signs and symptom is what allows the doctor to even diagnose you. But what's causing the symptom? These mechanisms. But what's causing these mechanisms? Now we're at the root cause. See, this is what I do with our patients. We identify the root cause. We're not just saying, oh, okay, you have this, take the supplement. We're actually identifying it, okay? So what are some of these root causes? Starting from north to south, because that's how digestion works. It goes from the top to the bottom. What's the most north you can go as far as digestion? Is it your mouth? Is it your saliva? Is that where digestion starts? No. 
Digestion starts in your brain. You have to be able to look at brain function and how that impact digestion. And that's through the brain gut access. The nerve that mediate that function is called the vagus nerve. This nerve that comes out of your brain innervates all the way down into your stomach, your gallbladder, pancreas, small intestine, large intestine. It impacts the whole entire digestive axis. So if your brain is not functioning great and your vagus nerve function is decreased, you're going to have compromised digestion. Like gas, bloating, indigestion, constipation, diarrhea, all these problems can be a result of these brain gut axis dysfunction. Because when this is not working, you don't have secretion, which means things are going to sit there and ferment, and then therefore you get become distended, you're going to have motility issue, and your immune system may even be affected because the brain, the immune, the gut, it's all talking to each other. Okay? So you have to start at the highest part. And a lot of people have problems in this area that are resulting in digestion. So how much enzyme do you need to take to fix that problem? Not enough, because that's not the root cause of the problem. How much probiotic you've got to take to fix problem here, even though you're showing problem here? Not enough probiotics, because that's not the root cause of the problem. You may have to start there. And then another thing can, uh, that can happen is you just have decreased uh, in the stomach level. You can have stomach as a root cause. Now, some of these symptoms, most of these symptoms actually overlap, meaning you can have problems in the stomach, in the pancreas, in the gallbladder, in the small intestine, and the large intestine. And guess what? Gas and bloating could be problem in all of this area. You can have brain or vagus nerve issue or stomach issues or pancreatic issues or gallbladder issues, small intestine much, and all these areas create gas and bloating. So common for people to have that. So then, okay, so if you say, I have gas and bloating, what do I take for it? It ain't about what you take for it. It's about the mechanism and where is it coming from for your particular case. For some people, the gas and bloating completely come from stomach, like a lack of stomach acid production, not enough HCL. Or they may have an infection like H. pylori, which is a bacteria that affects the stomach, so you cannot make HCL. Right? For another person with the same gas and bloating, the problem may be due to the gallbladder, decreased bile production, or sludgy bile, or lack of gallbladder contraction, so you don't detox well, or toxicity issue that's causing the bile to be sludge. So it could be a gallbladder problem that's causing gas and bloating for other people. Or it could be for another person, small intestine, they have celiac disease, which is autoimmune. Or it could be due to SIBO, small intestinal bacteria. Or it could be due to, auto, uh, uh, due to uh, leaky gut, which can also cause gas and bloating. So you see, it matters not what your diagnosis is, it matters what the root cause is. You have to understand these symptoms and the mechanism of what's causing that and be able to connect to where it's coming from. Some people, they may have root cause in coming from fermentation and secretion. And this problem is driving the gas and bloating and the indigestion as well as food reactions because they're not making enough secretions. And this problem can be caused by the brain, neurodegeneration, decreased vagus nerve function, and also they have H. pylori infection. And on top of that, they have leaky gut. And these things could be driving secretion problem that leads to the symptom. So then people are treating the symptom without addressing the actual problem. And everybody may have a different map. So it's more important to identify your roadmap. How do you navigate this to get to the end result so you feel better? Not about just taking a pill. Hopefully this helps you. If you feel like this video helped you understand something that you didn't previously or helped made it more clear for you, please like and share this video. So important to share because this is how we can elevate the consciousness of our country and people so that we can get a healthier population by changing how we think about disease versus root cause. So please share. And if you need help, as always, I'm here to help you. Please schedule a 15 minute discovery call with a member of our team so they can tell you how you can have access to me and schedule a uh, case review to learn how to progress and work with us so we can help you identify the root cause. 
And also, keep, uh, we are actually on the verge of releasing a gut restore program. This is a revolutionary online video course that includes self-assessment tools, teach you how to understand your labs, teach you how to understand the mechanism, teach you how to understand anatomy and physiology, all the pieces that I talk about in this video that will help you to go from this to this. It's going to be contained in this program, give you all the tools and resources so you can actually become your own doctor. Imagine, what would you do if you know what I know, right? I mean, start to think like a doctor instead of thinking like a consumer so you can make wise choices. That's what the Gut Restore program will do, is releasing really soon. So keep your eye on the uh, Facebook or if you're on our email list, or if you're not on the email list, you should be. Go to AskDrCon.com. You can opt in to be on our email list, and we'll let you know as soon as the, those programs re release, which will be either tomorrow or sometime this week. Super excited about it, and we'll talk to you next week at the AskDrCon show. Take care.